Ok, hello everyone and welcome back to your YouTube channel And today we have a very interesting and very important video for you, ok? As you must be aware, there are several videos in my YouTube channel regarding, uh, regarding uh, dynamic processes in electrical power systems And a very important part of this module about um, power system dynamics is that the participant, the student, must be aware about all the constants used at the modeling, okay? And that is the reason for this uh, session today. Today I will be running some practical example, numerical example related with electromechanical constant calculations, okay? Uh, basically here we are uh, concerned about the main electromechanical constants used for um, the study of um, electromechanical process in electrical power system, okay? Well, without further delay, let's go for this video and let's start with this one. This is the sample number one, electromechanical uh, constant calculation. And we start here, let's consider a uh, four pole, 50 Hertz, 10.5 KB um, synchronous machine that is connected to a um, turbo uh, generation unit, okay? And the rate power of uh, rate power or rate capacity of this um, generation unit is 46.55 MBA. And the rate power factor is lagging and it is 0 0.8, okay? This is basically the mechanical and electrical data that you can find at the nameplate of the synchronous generator in the case of this very specific uh, generation unit, okay? And there is more data. The synchronous machine has a wrong rotor as uh, expected in this kind of turbo generators with a moment of inertia I, and you can see here the value 5,746.585 kilogram uh, square meter, okay? There are several questions over there. The first one is extremely simple. Calculate the mechanical rotational speed, then calculate the synchronous speed, and that is the electrical side of the machine. Then calculate the kinetic energy stored at synchronous speed and then calculate the inertia constant H, the rotational inertia constant of this synchronous machine. Then calculate the inertia constant again, but the difference between the question four and five is referred to the units, okay? We will see the explanation in a minute. And finally, there is a question number six, and that question is related to the mm, M constant or momentum. In this case, we want the momentum in units, expressing units of megajoules seconds uh, per electrical degree, okay? And well, let's jump in and start the numerical solution, okay? This problem, again, is something that is extremely, extremely simple. And the first step, the first step is let's calculate the rotational speed. In this case, is the rate mechanical speed, okay? This is the rate mechanical speed and the calculation is extremely simple because we can use this equation over here and this equation say that um, the mechanical rotational speed depend on the frequency and everybody know that the frequency and this 60 seconds over minute is just a conversion unit in order that we can get the results in uh, RPM, okay? And the denominator, there is something quite interesting because in this case, the denominator is the number of poles divided by two. For that reason, in this very specific example, we are using a generator unit that is working at 50 Hertz. And we have this generator have a uh, four pole that for that reason we have here uh, four poles divided by two. Okay, 
From there, it's very simple. Like we can obtain the rotational speed, the mechanical rotational speed. Remember, this is the nominal mechanical rotational speed. And in this case, is 1,500 RPM, okay? I highly suggest that repeat this same example, but considering uh, 60 Hertz. Then we can obtain here the synchronous speed. We use, we use the, the term um, synchronous speed typically when we are talking about the electrical rotational speed. And in this case, the equation is extremely simple. All my students can see over here. The synchronous speed is basically 2 pi multiplied by the frequency. In this case, we are working with a generator that is connected to 50 hertz. That means that the rota electrical rotational speed is 50 pi radians per second, okay? Or if you prefer the full number, um, the electrical speed, the synchronous electrical speed is 340.1593 radians per second, okay? Very simple example. Let's go for the next question. And the next question is related with the kinetic energy, okay? You must remember that when we have the rotor of the synchronous machine and this rotor is rotating at constant speed, there are some kinetic energy that is stored inside that rotor. And that uh, kinetic energy is a function of two important variables. One of them is the letter I here, and that is the moment of inertia. And the second, the second element that is extremely important here is the use of the rotational speed. In this case, we are assuming that the rotational speed is equal to the synchronous speed and equal to the physical rotational speed. And in this case, when we put the number together, we can see over here, the equation is one half, one half um, moment of inertia and the square value of the rotational speed. We put the number together because the moment of inertia is a data coming in this problem and we obtain here the kinetic energy you can see over there 283.5 megajoules okay you must remember that kinetic energy is one of the form of energy and as consequence this form is represented in units um, representing energy and the most basic unit in the MK, uh, mks system is the Joule, okay? That is the reason that I am presenting here the result in megajoules, okay? Next step, next step, we can obtain now the rotational inertia constant, H. And what we need to do here is just apply the concept of, um, of rotational inertia constant, okay? Mm, if you look here, there is an equation the total uh, rotational inertia constant is equal to the kinetic energy divided by the rate apparent power, okay? In this case, we just substitute the values. We obtain here 283 megajoules representing the kinetic energy and located at the numerator. And we are dividing here by the rate power, rate apparent power of this machine coming from the end plate, coming from the statement, and that is 46.55 MBA, okay? When we put the number together, extremely simple, we obtain here the, um, the value, okay? The um, rotational, the rotational inertia constant is equal to uh, 6.09 and there are two different ways to express megawatts per second divided by MBA or you can use the classical representation also megajoules divided by MBA, okay? The, la the, this, the, the first form here, located here at the right, megawatts per second divided by MBA, that is the typical uh, unit that we will find in the classical uh, power system analysis software, okay? But we have H and the next step, the next step and the final step here, let me, let me move to uh, calculating another uh, kinetic energy, kinetic 
sorry, another rotational uh, inertia constant, okay? Um, as I say before, as I say before, when we are working with um, power system analysis software, the classical unit is megawatts per uh, second divided by MBA. That is the typical unit for uh, rotational inertia constant. However, some software, for instance, the Excellent Power Factory, they offer you the option of using two different input data, okay? You can use the input data based in this unit, megawatts per second MBA, and that is happening if we are using, if we are considering the apparent power as here in the denominator. But for instance, the excellent power factor, you also allow you to use the uh, rotational kinetic, uh, uh, sorry, the rotational inertia constant H uh, in terms of the uh, active power P. And this equation over here is again, the definition of inertia constant H, kinetic energy, but in this case, we are dividing by the active power, the active power P of this generation unit, right? Active power, and that is what we are doing, okay? Um, P, that is the nominal power, uh, active power, it's equal to the apparent power multiplied by the cosine of the angle, okay? We multiply here 46.55 MBA, that is the apparent power located at the nameplate. And you must remember that this very specific machine has a power factor of um, 0 0.9. 0 .9. No, 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 this is a typo because um, if you remember from the mm, data, mm, provided data, the power factor is 0 0.8, okay? Um, if you put the number together using the power factor 0 0.8, you will get the result here, and that is the ro rotational inertia constant H, but in terms of the active power, active power, uh, the rate active power, okay? And what is the idea of t those two different calculations, okay? Both of them represent the rotational inertia constant H, okay? In this case, the main difference is that we are, here we are expressing this number in terms of the uh, rate apparent power, and in this case, we are using it's again the rotational inertia constant H, but it's expressed in terms of the rate, the rate uh, active power, okay? Now, the next step, finally, is to calculate the M constant or the momentum, okay? Um, in this case, the statement of this problem is asking for the M constant or moment in megajoules per second per electrical degree. And to be honest, that is extremely simple because if you remember my class about the swing equation, you can go to the video of swing equation. If you go to that uh, class, you must remember here, we have an expression that is extremely simple. Um, at the numerator, you will find the rate, the rate apparent power of this machine in this case, the numerical value is 46.55 MBA, multiply by the inertia constant, in this case, using the uh, apparent power, and that is 6.09. And here, in the denominator of this equation, there is a constant 180 multiplied by F, okay? In this case, the 180 represent 100, 180 electrical degree. And this 180 degree is what is allow me to obtain the results in electrical degree here, okay? For that reason, when we put the number together, remember that the nominal frequency is 50 Hertz. We obtain here the momentum or M constant like 
0.0315 megajoule seconds per um, electrical degree, okay? That is basically the uh, solution that is the value of the M constant, okay? Um, here is the, the MATLAB file that I use for the solution. And well, this, this is all for this video. And I will see you in the next one with more practical examples about electromechanical constant calculations, okay? Thank you very much for watching this video. I will see you very soon. Please stay in touch. If you like the video, remember to like. And also, if you want to stay in touch, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you very much. That's it's all. Thank you. Bye now.